water needs to be removed from a sprinkler system, whether for testing, routine maintenance, or other reasons, it must be discharged efficiently and, in some cases, very quickly. For this reason, all sprinkler piping and fittings must be installed in a way that allows the system to be properly drained. In this video, we'll explain the NFPA 13 requirements for drains and the methods of installing systems to ensure complete and reliable drainage. According to Section 1610.1 of NFPA 13, 2025 edition, all sprinkler pipes and fittings must be installed so that the system can be properly drained. Wherever practicable, piping should be arranged to flow toward the main drain valve. Ideally, the entire system should be designed so that all water can be discharged through the main drain. If that's not possible, auxiliary and sectional drainage must be sized and positioned based on the system type and the volume of trapped piping. Let's explore the key purposes of drainage in fire sprinkler systems. Facilitates maintenance and repairs. Draining the system allows safe access for servicing without water damage or delays. Reduces downtime. By enabling quick and complete water removal, drainage minimizes system downtime, ensuring the fire protection system is restored and operational as soon as possible. Supports modifications and additions. When upgrading or expanding a system, draining specific sections is often necessary. Properly placed drains make these changes easier and safer to perform. Restoring dry or pre-action systems. Dry and pre-action systems must be fully drained before resetting. Drainage ensures that trapped water is removed, preventing corrosion, freezing, or false alarms. Prevents water damage. Controlled drainage avoids accidental discharge inside the building, protecting property and equipment. Improves testing efficiency. Drainage is essential for accurate flow tests, like the main drain test. It ensures accurate results and helps identify obstructions or pressure drops in the system. According to an FPA 13, 2025 edition, sections 16911, 16911-1611, 1610-3, 1610-42, and 1610-44, Several general requirements must be met to ensure proper drainage in fire sprinkler systems. Drains must be properly sized to handle expected flow rates. Drain valves shall be approved. Drains shall discharge outside or to a drain connection capable of handling the flow of the drain. Pipe slope is important, especially in dry and pre-action systems, to ensure complete drainage. All drain valves shall be provided with permanently marked weatherproof metal or rigid plastic identification signs. In the following sections, we'll explore each of these requirements in more detail, including their purpose, design considerations, and best practices. According to Section 1610.21, in wet pipe sprinkler systems, NFPA 13 permits the piping to be installed level. In pipe schedule systems, the gradual reduction in pipe size from the supply to the branch lines naturally creates a slight pitch, even when the pipes are installed level. This is due to the slope of the reducing fittings. However, in hydraulically calculated systems, especially those with looped or gridded configurations, this natural pitch is less pronounced. Still, when installed level, most of the water will drain out of the piping, and because wet systems are typically installed in areas not subject to freezing, small amounts of residual water are not considered problematic. Section 16.10.2.2 emphasizes that any trapped piping must be drained. This means auxiliary drains must be provided to ensure complete drainage of isolated pipe sections. In summary, while pipe slope is not required for wet systems, proper planning for auxiliary drainage is essential to maintain system integrity and prevent water accumulation. Section 16.10.3 of NFPA 13, 2025, outlines the pipe pitch requirements for dry pipe 
and pre-action sprinkler systems. Proper drainage is essential, especially in areas subject to freezing, to prevent water from accumulating and causing damage. Because these systems are often installed in environments prone to freezing, proper drainage is critical. Water trapped in the pipes can freeze within minutes in areas maintained at or below 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Additionally, stagnant water can lead to internal pipe corrosion and calcium buildup, which may obstruct sprinkler heads during a fire. According to the table, in non-refrigerated areas for both dry pipe and pre-action systems, branch lines must be pitched at a minimum of one half inch per 10 feet, equivalent to four millimeters per meter. Main lines require a minimum pitch of one quarter inch per 10 feet, or two millimeters per meter. For dry pipe and pre-action systems in refrigerated areas, the pitch requirements are more stringent. Both branch lines and main lines must be pitched at one half inch per 10 feet, four millimeters per meter. This steeper pitch helps ensure complete drainage, minimizing the risk of ice formation and system failure. Proper pipe pitch isn't just a design detail. It's a safeguard against system failure, corrosion, and obstruction. In the next section, we'll explore how auxiliary drains support these pitch systems and ensure long-term reliability. Section 16.10.4 covers the requirements for system, main drain, and sectional drain connections. There are three primary types of drains in fire sprinkler systems, main drains, sectional drains, and auxiliary drains. Each type serves a specific purpose, whether it's discharging water during maintenance, isolating zones for service, or removing trapped water to prevent freezing. Now, we are going to become more familiar with the requirements for the main drain, including its sizing and installation location. According to Section 3310 of NFPA 25, 2026 edition, the main drain is defined as the primary drain connection located on the system riser. The main drain in a fire sprinkler system is installed as a test connection. Its primary purpose is to verify that water supply valves are open and to detect any changes in the condition of the water supply by comparing results with previous tests. While flow can be estimated from a main drain connection, the test is not intended to evaluate the water supply for hydraulic purposes. Instead, it serves as a monitoring tool and as the primary means of draining the system during maintenance or repairs. In systems with large supply piping, additional flow testing may be required to gain a more complete understanding of the water supply condition. Drain connections for system supply risers and mains shall be sized according to Table 161042. As you can see, for risers or mains up to 2 inches, the required drain connection size is 3 quarters inch or larger. For pipe sizes 2 and a half inches, 3 inches, and 3 and a half inches, the drain connection must be at least 1 and a quarter inches. And for risers or mains 4 inches and larger, the drain connection must be 2 inches or larger. It is worth mentioning an important point here. The main drain test is a critical procedure for verifying water supply conditions in a sprinkler system. The main drain test consists of reading the pressure in the system before opening the drain, after opening the main drain fully, and then after closing the drain. However, the test cannot be performed without a gauge. The location of the gauge in relation to the main drain is equally important because accurate readings depend on proper placement. For example, the figure on the left illustrates an acceptable installation where the gauge can measure pressure correctly. In contrast, the figure on the right shows an unacceptable arrangement where turbulence caused by a change in water flow direction leads to incorrect gauge readings. According to Section 1610461 of NFPA 13, 2025 edition, 
main drain test connections must be provided at locations that allow proper flow testing of water supplies and system connections. Furthermore, Section 1610.462 requires that these connections be arranged so the valve can be opened fully and kept open long enough to ensure a valid test without causing water damage. When sprinkler systems are installed in areas where the exterior temperature is subject to freezing, special precautions must be taken for the drain piping. According to NFPA 13, 2025, Section 161049, at least four feet of exposed drain pipe must be located in a heated area between the drain valve and the exterior wall whenever the drain piping extends outside. This requirement acts as a frost break, ensuring that cold air from the outside does not cause the water inside the system to freeze. Imagine a multi-story building where maintenance is needed on the sprinkler system of just one floor. Naturally, you want to avoid shutting down the entire system, so what should you do? According to Section 16.9.10.1 of NFPA 13, 2025, buildings exceeding two stories must be equipped with a floor control valve, check valve, pressure gauge, drain valve, and flow switch. These components provide isolation, control, and annunciation of water flow for each individual floor. This means you can safely shut down and service one level of the system without affecting the rest of the building. However, this requirement may not apply if the total area of all floors combined does not exceed the system protection area limitations specified in Section 441. We'll explore this topic in more detail in upcoming videos. Now let's explore how sectional drains support this kind of localized maintenance and drainage. A sectional drain, as defined in NFPA 25, 2026 edition, section 33102, is a drain located beyond a sectional control valve, and it serves to drain only a portion of the system. A common example is a drain installed within a floor control valve assembly in a multi-story building, allowing localized drainage without affecting the entire system. Remember that in floors equipped with a zone control assembly, the size of the sectional drain valve is determined based on the pipe on which the zone control is installed, according to Table 161042. Additionally, when floor control valve drains are tied into a common drain riser, that riser must be increased by one pipe size downstream of each drain connection joining it. According to Section 161051 of NFPA 13, 2025 edition, auxiliary drains are defined as drain connections installed to remove water from a trapped section of pipe. They shall be provided wherever a change in piping direction prevents drainage of system piping through the main drain valve. Auxiliary drains are essential for trapped piping. Their type, size, and arrangement depend on several factors. The system type, whether the piping is subject to freezing conditions, and the volume of trapped water. An auxiliary drain is not a main drain. It is not intended for testing the water supply. It's not designed to be operated under pressure. Its sole purpose is to provide a safe way to discharge water from localized trapped piping. So, this distinction is critical for understanding the role of auxiliary drains in sprinkler systems and ensuring proper compliance with NFPA standards. Now let's see how the size of auxiliary drains is determined in wet systems and pre-action systems installed in non-refrigerated areas. According to Section 161052 of NFPA 13, 2025 edition, the sizing of auxiliary drains depends directly on the capacity of the trapped section of pipe. This means that the required valve size and arrangement are determined by how much water is contained in the isolated piping section. Larger trapped volumes demand larger valves and more accessible configurations, while smaller volumes may only require simple plugs or nipples. So, if the trapped volume is 50 gallons or more, 
the drain must include a valve at least one inch in diameter piped to an accessible location. If the trapped volume is between 5 and 50 gallons, the drain must have a 3 quarter inch valve plus a plug or a nipple and cap. For trapped volumes less than 5 gallons, there are three acceptable options. Option 1. Use a half inch nipple and cap or plug. Option 2. If the section can be drained by removing a single pendant sprinkler, no auxiliary drain is required. Option 3. If flexible couplings or easily separated connections are used, the nipple and cap or plug may be omitted. It's important to ensure that all water is eliminated from dry and pre-action systems in areas subject to freezing. Any residual water can lead to excess corrosion when air is introduced into the system. In addition to confirming that the system can be properly drained, the designer must ensure that all piping is pitched correctly, as discussed earlier in the video. In these systems, condensation is a key concern as temperatures fluctuate, moisture in the air condenses, settling at the low points of the piping. If this water remains and freezes, it can expand and potentially rupture the pipe. To determine the proper size of an auxiliary drain, we need to consider the volume of trapped water in the system. If the trapped volume is less than 5 gallons, the drain must include a valve not smaller than one half inch along with a plug or a nipple and cap. If the trapped volume is greater than five gallons, the auxiliary drain must consist of two one inch valves and one two inch by 12 inch condensate nipple or an equivalent listed device. This assembly known as a drum drip is installed at the low points of dry and pre-action systems. The drum drip functions like an airlock, allowing water to be drained without losing air pressure in the system. It provides a controlled way to remove condensate or trapped water, helping prevent corrosion and freeze damage while maintaining system integrity. The proper way to operate a drum drip is to begin with the lower valve closed and the upper valve open, as shown in the figure. Water collects in the larger diameter vertical section of pipe which acts as a reservoir. When it's time to check the drum drip, first close the upper valve, then open the lower valve. Remove the plug and observe whether water drains out. If water does drain, wait until it completely stops. Then close the lower valve and open the upper valve. Listen for the sound of water refilling the chamber. Once you hear it, close the upper valve and reopen the lower valve to check for more water. Repeat this process until no more water drains, ensuring the system is fully cleared of trapped condensate. Another important drainage requirement in NFPA 13, specifically in section 1612-7, applies to the piping located between the check valve and the outside hose coupling of the fire department connection. In areas subject to freezing, this section of pipe must be equipped with an approved automatic drain valve. In the event that the check valve in the Siamese connection leaks, the purpose of the automatic drip is to safely drain that water and keep the piping between the check valve and the hose couplings free of water. Without this automatic drain, any collected water could freeze, potentially blocking the fire department from pumping into the system during an emergency. The automatic drip also makes maintenance easier, since this section of pipe remains dry and accessible. As shown in the figure, the automatic drain valve should be installed at the lowest point of the fire department connection piping to ensure complete drainage. Under fire conditions, when a fire department pumper pressurizes the FDC, the internal ball is pushed forward, automatically sealing the valve to prevent water from escaping. Once the pressure is removed, gravity returns the ball to its original position, allowing any residual water to drain out and preventing freezing in exposed piping. <laughs>